Hello, I'm Jonathan Dunsky, author of The Adam Lapid Mysteries, and today I'd like to tell you about a short mystery story that is over 100 years old. The story I'm going to tell you about is called A Jury of Her Peers, and it was published in 1917, and it was written by Susan Glaspell. Susan Glaspell was a journalist, a playwright, and an author, and she wrote this story Basically, it was adapted from a short play that she wrote, which was inspired by uh, a story that she reported on several years before. And that story was the murder of a farmer called John Hossack, a murder that happened in the year 1900 and which became national news in the United States at the time. So John Hossack was a farmer, I believe, in Iowa, and he lived with his wife. And one night, while he and his wife were sleeping in their bed, uh, someone whacked uh, John Hossack with an axe and killed him. And his wife claimed that she was sleeping next to him and did not awaken when this happened. The police did not believe her. They arrested her. She was put on trial and she was found guilty of murder. She served, I believe, about a year in prison before her uh, conviction was overturned and then there was a retrial and there was a hung jury so she was released and she uh, continued to claim that she was innocent until she died and she and her husband had nine children and all nine children supported their mother either they really believed that she was innocent or it was because their father was a difficult man and that was the reputation that, that he had. And, and so there was this uh, feeling among the public that him being a hard man and a, and a let's say, a, a bad husband or a difficult man to get along with was the motive uh, for his murder many people still believed that his wife killed him. So Susan Glaspell reported on the story and then 16 years later she uh, published a short play which was based on it and a year later in 1917 she published A Jury of Her Peers, the short story which was based on the play which was inspired by the murder of John Hossack. So let me tell you a bit about the story itself and what's it about and what makes it rather special. So the protagonist of the story is uh, a woman called Martha Hale, and she is uh, a farmer's wife living in a fictional county called uh, Dixon County. Um, we don't know exactly in which state, but it is in a rural area of the United States. And she is called abruptly from her home to come along for a buggy ride. And in the buggy, uh, there's her, her husband, Lewis, Sheriff Peters, the local sheriff, and his wife. And basically his wife wanted Martha to come along so she would not be the only woman because they're going to drive to, this, to the scene of a murder. What happened was that uh, Martha's husband, Lewis, uh, went uh, to visit a neighboring farm. Uh, he wanted to speak to the farmer, a man called John Wright. And there he found John Wright's wife, uh, Minnie, um, sitting in a chair, acting very confused, and upstairs he, he found John Wright dead in his bed, someone had strangled him with a rope. So he called uh, the sheriff, and now the sheriff is bringing Lewis along with him to tell uh, the county attorney what he saw, how things were you know, laid out in the house, whether he touched anything and so on. Uh, John Wright's wife, the suspect, has been taken to jail and she does not appear in the story at all. So when they arrive at the Wright house, uh, Martha Hale immediately notices that the house is in rather dismal state and it seems like it is more, it is poorer than her house and the house, houses of other neighboring farms. And she reflects on, on her uh, decision or on her never visiting uh, the right home, even though she used to be friends with 
with the wife, with, with the woman now uh, charged with murder, or at least suspected of murder. And this is because she always felt like this was uh, a sad home, and because John Wright apparently was someone who was difficult to get along with, who was very cheap, uh, who did not like to spend money on his wife or on doing anything, there were no children. So this was a sad house, and she now blames herself for not visiting and not uh, providing support to her former friend. So the house is in a dismal state, and Lewis Hale begins telling his story, and he and the uh, county attorney and the sheriff sort of begin making disparaging remarks or prejudicial remarks about uh, John Wright's wife and about the, uh, let's say, the trifles that women are interested in, like kitchen things, one of them says, and, and they sort of talk as if women are maybe childish or maybe emotional or not capable of, of uh, discernment like, uh, like men. But when they go upstairs to see this, where actually uh, John Wright was found dead, Mrs. Peters, the sheriff's wife, and Martha Hale are left alone in the kitchen, and they, using their experience as women who um, manage their household, they're able to figure out exactly what happened in the right home. One of the things that the sheriff and the county attorney were not sure about was whether or what, would, what was the motive uh, of John Wright's wife. Why would she have killed him? They have no idea and it, apparently this is something that they feel that they need to secure a conviction. So they are not able to see the dismal state of the house or the fact that uh, uh, John Wright was cheap and very, uh, very hard with his wife. But Martha Hale and uh, Mrs. Peters are able to figure out exactly what happened and why through what they see around them in the kitchen, through how things are laid out or the things themselves. And they are able to discover the actual motive of this murder. Uh, but now they need to decide, just the two of them, uh, what they're going to do about this knowledge that they acquire. And this is where a, the title, A Jury of Her Peers, comes from, because now they're the jury. They're supposed to uh, pass judgment on their uh, on a fellow woman. So what makes this story special is knowing when it was published. It was published in 1917, uh, before women had uh, the right to vote. And in many places in the, in the United States, they were not allowed to sit on juries at all. So it's a, it's a feminist story. And some, even though the language is, is a bit dated, um, it is still a very enjoyable and interesting story and very well written. And I had a good time with it. It has sort of stayed in my mind uh, since I read it because I found it to be... Uh, a very good story and, and a very interesting historical document. So I recommend the story. I enjoyed it and, uh, and it's not long, so you can read it in, I'd say, half an hour or so. And because it was published in 1917, it is now in the public domain, so you can just read it online. And I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can find, to, to a website where you can uh, just read the story for free. So let me know if you've ever uh, heard about the story or read it. Um, and if you, or if you can recommend any other stories that you think I might find interesting. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next review.